And good morning, everybody, and welcome to the Morning Brew, live on Brew Sports. It is a Monday edition of the program, a very belated Easter to you and yours. I hope that your weekend was exciting, uh, maybe restful for some folks as well, too. Uh, Jamie, great to have you back as well. How, how are we doing yeah. today? How was the weekend for you? Good. Weekend was busy. We figured it was- Finished up our regular season, and then yeah. yesterday had some brunch with some friends and went home for uh, Easter. Ah, good old times going yeah. home for Easter. That's good. That's How good. Was your Easter? Uh, Easter was very enjoyable, very quiet and relaxing at the Colburn House, nice. which is very needed with the chaotic nice. life that we live. Yeah, it was nice yesterday. We sat outside. I got a little sun on I was going to say, you looked a little darker when you walked yeah. in. Only but- one arm, though. Were you just sitting like half outside or no, how was that working? I was fully outside, but I think because when I was talking conversation, I would uh, keep, keep, keep twisting. Yeah. Fair enough. Fair yeah, enough. What was your, what was your favorite sun. thing that you got to eat uh, over Easter? Was there any, any signature dishes at all that you got to take home or just got to, got um, to enjoy? My grandma makes this really good soup and she had it yesterday. So, hmm. yeah. All right. Fair enough. Good. Uh, what, what kind of a soup, though? Because you know me, I'm a soupaholic. It's so like, I mean, anytime I hear soup, I get excited. I don't really know because it's there's like noodles, but they're like really little skinny noodles, and then like just like a broth, and there's meatballs in it, which sounds really weird. But I don't know. It's really good. It sounds almost like an Italian wedding soup, is what I'm hearing. Yeah, I'm not sure. My aunt made it once without the meatballs, and it just it was disgusting. So the meatballs are like <laughs> the key meatballs ingredient. are the key figure to making the yeah. whole thing work. Yeah. Fair enough. Well, yeah, we uh, we had some great brunch yesterday, too. Made French toast. Uh, I made blueberry muffins. Mm. Nice. Fresh pineapple. Life was good at the Colburn like House. Pineapple. Oh, really? Mm-hmm. Wow. The texture of it. Oh, really? Yeah. I Would like you have, it. like, pineapple, like, in drinks, though, or anything? Like, mm-hmm. smoothies or alcohol or anything mm-hmm. like that? Because Malibu has, uh, like, a pineapple aftertones, doesn't it? Yeah, but that's not, like, a texture. I suppose so. Yeah. That's just the, okay, so it's not the flavor you don't like, it's just the actual yeah. texture. Okay, that makes sense. No, I, I'm that way about certain things as well, too. So it makes total sense to me. But, oh boy, oh boy. Well, a lot of good things to get to today, not only in the sports world, but also outside of the sports world as well, too. But uh, first and foremost, we do to remind all of you guys to, to give us your thoughts about anything we talk about today. Let us know how your Easter was. Uh, post any pictures below if you were that person and took uh, the adorable family photo. Or the crazy look what I got to eat for Easter breakfast. We'd love to see what you guys uh, got to do. Did you get anything in your Easter baskets? Did you do Easter baskets as a kid at all? As a kid, yeah. Don't do them anymore, though? You don't like Harold doesn't get you a little something nice every year? No. Come on, Harold. Step up your game. Did you get get Harold anything? Like a little cat treat or a little ball or something? No. Bad cat. I don't even, I didn't really see him yesterday because I was at brunch and then I went straight home and. Wow. Yeah, bad cat mom. He's probably sitting at home right now, just cursing your name and climbing the walls. Probably. Being like, what the heck, mom? After all I do for you, I cuddle you, I provide you comfort. He does. Not even a, a lick of catnip Poor for me. Poor little guy. Man, oh man. So sad. Poor Harold. <laughs> Poor one out for Harold. But <laughs> but uh, aside from Easter, though, of course, uh, a lot of great stuff taking place over the weekend. Uh, you and I talked about this briefly last night, how we, we both just do so much during the week that when it comes to the weekend, we kind of just forget about sports and just forget about real life because they're like, okay, now I need to go be an adult for a little while or I need to go spend time with my family now. But there's a lot of stuff, good, bad, and ugly, that took place over the weekend, unfortunately. I guess I don't know which way you want to go to start the show because there's a lot of things that we can like talk about. I feel like if we start low. Start low and then work our way yeah. up. Okay. Liz and Jeff are both saying good morning on Facebook. Great to see both of you. Good to see you. Good morning. Hope your Easter's were a lot of fun. So uh, the, the good, the bad, the ugly here, the, the bad thing to start right off the bat, unfortunately, um, there were two very notable deaths over the weekend. Um, one was a daughter and one was a sister. Uh, for those of you that maybe heard about this, um, uh, former NFL tight end Todd Heap um, accidentally ran over his daughter. Yeah. Hit and ran over his three-year-old daughter in his driveway. Uh, in his driveway. Um, I think they were just playing in the driveway, and Todd was just backing out the truck and um, accidentally hit her, unfortunately. And it was it was very strange, and I know you don't necessarily understand this quite yet, but as someone that is a father to a very young child, it just it really hit me in a really strange way when I when I heard this, and it just it did something to me internally, and I just hugged my son a little bit tighter yesterday or two days ago, I guess, when this actually happened when I fo- when I found this news out, and I just was like, wow, like that. I just I don't know, I I can't put it into words, but it just. It does something to you as a parent when you have a very, I mean, a child of any age, obviously, but like especially having a little one like I have, it just just did something to me. Well, I think it's also crazy, too, because, you know, he had then had to pick up, I don't know, it doesn't say what happened to her, but they had to then take her to the hospital where she later passed away. So, so they even, you know, 
watching her suffer like he knew that right that he was the reason she was suffering i don't know it's just yeah it's just one of those things uh brooklyn heap uh was the name of the of the adorable little girl uh we wish the heap family a, a i mean i mean i don't even know what, you, what can you say in something like this you just wish the family well and that they are able to recover from something like this but you have to think that this is going to be something that's going to follow todd around for the, for rest, the rest of his of life right. i mean there's one, it's one thing to purposely go out and have malicious thoughts towards somebody, but it's another thing to have zero ill will towards anybody and accidentally do something like this that ends a life. It just it right. messes somebody up. So hopefully the family has enough support around Todd because he's going to need every possible bit of help that he can get to get through this because you, you kill your, a child and it's just you never come back from that and from a lot of people from what I've heard. Right. Um, another thing that took place over the weekend, uh, not to, not, we're not trying to start things off on a downer here by talking about all this death right off the bat, but uh, kind of a mixture of good and bad in this, though. Uh, Isaiah Thomas's sister passed away over the weekend. For those that don't know who Isaiah Thomas is, he is a uh, player for the Boston Celtics. Uh, the Boston Celtics uh, were playing their first round playoff game in the NBA playoffs, which we'll dive into a little bit more in a little bit while, uh, against the Chicago Bulls. Uh, and basically kind of came out, and the the team players were like, Isaiah, do you want to play? Do you not want to play? I mean, I I probably, I guess I don't know. I've never been put in this high pressure of a situation. Would you you play if you knew that your sibling passed away, you know, just hours before you had to go and play this game? I think I might, but I'm the type of person that, when I cope with something, like I keep myself busy to not think about it. Right. So I think that, Maybe I would. It's I, that's the thing. I guess I don't know. Like I mean, I've never been put in the situation. I mean, they had a moment of silence before the sh- before the game. They when the when he was announced and uh, as a you know a, as a starter for the game, the entire arena just absolutely erupted. There, there's there's not a lot of things like sports that can bring tragedy together. Like when you when you have a tragedy happen, but then you're involved in something with sports. Somehow it brings it all together, and suddenly you find this supernatural power almost inside of you to go out and perform. I mean, Packer fans remember when Brett Favre's dad died and then he went out and played arguably the greatest game of his career against the Oakland Raiders on Monday Night Football and just you the stuff like that that you just can't explain. And I think Isaiah Thomas, unfortunately, the, the Celtics didn't win the game. However, he still put up 33 points and still just absolutely played an incredible game. Uh, you know, fans and players were saying that he was incredible. He's an amazing player, an amazing person. Uh, you couldn't help be inspired by the way he was playing over the weekend as well, too. Granted, Boston now down a game after losing uh, 106 to 102 to the Bulls. It's to be very interesting to see how this game and the series plays out, and we'll dive into that as you said a little bit later. But uh, kind of, kind of some sad stuff, though. Unfortunately, uh, not only for Todd Heap and his family, but for Isaiah losing a, losing a sibling. I both of my brothers are alive and well. I'd be, I'm going to be devastated if, if either of them pass away before I do. Can't even imagine, honestly. I mean, losing a brother for you. Right. I mean, I can't even imagine either what that would feel like. So, prayers for the Thomas family as well uh, from their from their tragedy. Uh, a couple of people on Facebook. Josh says, "Top of the muffin to you." I'm assuming you meant top of the morning, but maybe not. I do love a good muffin, so top of the muffin to you, Josh. And Liz says, "Jamie, I'm with you. I would I would play to stay busy." Yeah, and that's what some folks were saying too. That Isaiah Thomas just wanted to just get to the game. He's like, "I just need three hours of distraction, right. and then I'll deal with it again after that." Basically, and. I mean, he did everything he could do, but Boston has these other issues that they just aren't as good as, you know, Chicago currently with what's going on. So nothing against him in that regards. Uh, all right, moving away from the sadness, moving away from a lot of that stuff. There was some other fun stuff that took place uh, over the sports world, over the sports weekend. Uh, people love a good Easter, you know, a good mascot race, a good Easter bunny, all that fun stuff, right? I mean, in Milwaukee, we have the racing sausages, there's all kinds of stuff that takes place. And uh, the, the Washington Nationals had this very strange uh, moment take place where what? the Easter Bunny just absolutely <laughs> KOs Teddy Roosevelt. Um, thinking about how you would say that. I mean, I, I never thought in the world I would say where the Easter Bunny just absolutely knocks out Teddy <laughs> Roosevelt. It is, it's a brutal hit, like, when you, when, you, when you look at it, when you go back and look at it. But, like, 
these these mascots are just beating up on the presidents uh, for the Washington Nationals. I think they have the racing presidents instead of the racing sausages. But Teddy Roosevelt looks like he's in the clear. And then this this Easter Bunny, he comes off the top like of the leaves. dugout. Yeah. Like, I'm pretty sure off the side railing or something. But, like, you see Teddy's like, I'm good. And then the Easter Bunny's like, nope. And then, boom. Just drops him. Knocks his ears straight off of him. That poor guy. Do you guy. think that that mascot, Teddy Roosevelt, has, like, a clip under his chin? Because you would think that that... I'm assuming so, like, how do you take a off. hit like that and not have an issue? Like, I was expecting his head to go, like, pop straight off. Because, I mean, but for the racing sausages, it's just something that they just funk straight on, yeah, I think. Yeah, well, then their arms. And then their arms come yeah. out, so then that's how they run. But, but yeah, with, with these, I guess, I, I don't know. I'd have to examine the pictures a little bit closer to see, like, if it is still that same general suit, but your arms come out or... I don't know. I've yeah. never been in the mascot business, so I guess I don't. I don't truly really know. Serious business. It's true. Uh, Teddy Roosevelt um, is on the ten-day DL. We have yet to hear if he will return. The Easter Bunny has been fined twenty thousand dollars for spearing, uh, and he has been suspended for four games as well, too. So uh, we wish the Easter Bunny. For those of you that started the Easter Bunny over the weekend, you're going to get some negative fantasy points. So good luck with that moving forward. Mm-hmm. Uh, anything else that's brewing this weekend, Jamie? That we need to get to. Uh, a couple of things, I think. All right. uh, first, the NFL has decided to change their celebration rule, or start to, I guess. Hopefully. That's the plan, at least. Yeah. Oh, that makes me so excited, because com- I complained about that weeks ago. You did. That um, I think it's stupid that they can't celebrate. I know. That's the thing. Like The NFL is basically, it's this, the gentleman, uh, Dean Blandino, I believe, the gentleman that is uh, that was the former VP of officiating, I believe, in the NFL, who has now left to go have a role in the TV side of things, uh, is the one that's basically come out and saying this, saying, all right, we need to loosen up the, the penalties for celebrations. Like, you'd like to think, to an extent, some of these guys have common sense. You know, like, okay, don't do a lot of thrusting. Don't, like, don't do anything sexual. It really just comes down to don't do anything sexual. Don't flip somebody off. Don't do anything racist. Right. Aside from that, who cares? Do whatever the heck you want. You know, no political statements for the most part. You know, don't take your jersey off and have, you know, F you Trump or whatever. Like, you can't do stuff like that. That's common sense, you know, for the most part, depending on who you're talking to. But... I what uh, is this going to do anything good for the sport though? I mean, like that's what I guess I, that's what I'm still trying to figure out is if you take away all the the restrictions, is it are players going to then all of a sudden just go crazy no, with the excessive celebrations? So. I don't think so. I think that um, it'll be good for them to be able to celebrate in the end zone or whatever <laughs> as a team and and not be penalized for it because true. What's the point of doing something good if you can't be like? Uh, rewarded isn't the word I'm looking for, but like when they score a goal in hockey, mm-hmm. they you know everyone they usually everybody do skates some over, type of, right? Yeah, like, yeah, we did something. The guy gets a quick second to celebrate. All the guys run over. They all jump, like, and then and then he runs past the the bench. They usually give him a fist bump, and then they continue. So like it can be done in like a normal, nice manner. Sometimes they jump into the boards, like it's fine. They can do the same thing here. We have Lambo leap, mm-hmm. people dab or whatever they do. Just don't twerk your booty. But what if you have a nice booty? Mm-mm. Save it for the clubs. <laughs> Save it for the clubs. Say it, hey, babe, hey. You know, it's not it's not fun that they celebrate and then they get penalized. Like, right. That's not. No one wants that. So, I think this is a step in the right dis- direction. The direction. The direction. Direction. Fair enough. Fair enough. Yeah, I, I would agree with you on that regards as well too. I think that. The NFL has certainly, I mean, it's called the No Fun League for a reason because they've taken away all of these fun things, you know, to, 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 to borrow the, the better you know, phrase of it, that people used to do. Like, right. oh, my gosh, like I would, t- you know, T.O. running to the end zone and pulling a Sharpie out and signing the football and, like, giving it to a fan or, like, pulling out a phone and, like, making a phone call or, like, talking to his agent. Like, that stuff was good child fun, like, for us when we were growing up. Nowadays, you do that and you're just getting drop kicked and right. being like, all right, like, nope. Not happening. Get out of here. Nobody likes you. I think that the fun of the game needs to come back because there's so many rules now. Like, you can barely have a play anymore without, like, you know, a 10-yard penalty or anything like that anymore. So I think doing something like that would actually be a good thing as well for the NFL. So hopefully that ends up being a positive, not a negative for them moving forward, depending on if these players are capable of controlling their bodies and their actions, which, right. as you and I know, doesn't always work out, unfortunately. What does work out, though, is the fact that there are a couple of teams in the NHL that might actually be pulling out the brooms a little bit earlier than they thought they might. 
Uh, you had the opportunity to go to a Predators game on Did. Thursday night. Um, so I wanted to get your thoughts. I wanted to hear your just general experience about that. But then, I mean, the NHL playoffs and the, N- and the NBA playoffs are both going on. The NBA playoffs are a game in, so we're not going to spend too much time on that. But the NHL playoffs, there's a couple of games or a couple of series that are already at 3-0. Yeah. Like if the Penguins are ready to sweep the Blue Jackets, which I'm a little surprised by. But so at the I. same time. I'm also we surprised. were wondering about that. Yeah, that the Blues are about to sweep the Wild. That's a little insane. Blues fans are like, easy. Don't yeah. ju- don't yeah. don't jinx. Don't be saying that. You know, don't make it bigger than it is. Right. Anaheim's up two zero against Calgary, and the good old Nashville Predators are up two zero against the Blackhawks. <laughs> I'm so excited. That's another. They play again tonight, don't they? Yeah. Game Preds three. Blackhawks game three. That's in Chicago, Nashville. Uh, Nashville. Nashville. Yep. Nashville. Okay. Yep. So walk, walk me through these games, and realistically, uh, are these games going to finish in sweeps, or is somebody going to storm no, back and pull a, pull a game seven, you know, and reverse the ties? I would say there's going to be a lot of game fives, a lot of game fives. As far as game sevens, I'm not so sure about that. Um, because you'd, li- you'd like to think that Minnesota and Chicago are good enough to at least win a game. You're correct, right. You'd and like to think, maybe? Yeah, and I, I could see Pittsburgh sweeping the Blue Jackets just because, I think we said this last week, the Blue Jackets, the, or Pittsburgh has so much experience in the run for the Stanley Cup. Like, yeah. this is nothing to them. Where it's, you know, a big deal for the Blue Jackets. Um, I have no idea what's going on with Nashville and Chicago. This is like a mind-blowing <laughs> I uh, like I support this team, and even for me, I'm just like I don't know. We had I don't a, know what to do with my hands. We were at the game on Saturday. I, like we had an Admirals game, and my phone, you know, one zero. I'm like, Whew. like all right, and easy. Like two zero. I'm like okay, like no, we did. And Heather would walking me a girl. She's like, did you see the score? I'm like, I don't know what's going like, on. Ah, ah, we're up so, five zero. Yeah. So this is so like, I don't know. What's I happening. couldn't believe it. I, I, I checked happening. the score later in the game too, and I was like. What? Yeah. Five zero. I wish I I always texted there. you and just being like, oh my gosh. But then I saw you were on social media. You were just like, ah. I'm like, oh, okay. I'm so happy. Like she's just, I'm like, she's, she sees it. She's excited. Yeah. Like, we're good. <gasps> and, I, and then we, like, they left the, our owner left the uh, bar at the rink open so that we could all watch the, yeah. the game together. So that was really nice. Um, and a lot of fans stayed after, so that was cool. Hmm. Um, yeah, but, I mean, other than that, I've, you know, well, I would have, pictured Boston to probably be up 2-0, not tied at 1-1. Right. But besides that, I think every, every, you know, I don't think anything else is shocking except for the fact that the Blues are sweeping the Wild. And the Wild has had such a great season. That's the big thing, yeah. Yeah. The, I, I had the Wild advancing, and I also did have the Blue Jackets just because sometimes I like the underdog. Yeah. But, eh. But, I mean, experience versus the new guy in the block doesn't always work out. Right. The experience 90% of the time plays out. But sometimes I just hope that they would have came through. I don't know. Wild Columbus fans could still do it. Yeah, Wild fans have got to be losing their mind right now, though. Yeah, be like, oh, are you serious? Because the, the Blue Jackets started off, you know, uh, the season hot. Mm-hmm. And then they kind of went back to just being a normal organization where the Wild was hot all year round hmm. or all season long. So it's really <sighs> mind-boggling to me. It is a bit mind-boggling when you really break it down, honestly. Did you know oh, that... Oh, boy. Uh, maybe not, maybe. I want to say game one. Montreal's um, 50-50, the winner took home like $300,000. Their 50-50 yeah. raffle? Yeah. What? Mm-hmm. It was an absolutely absurd <laughs> number. $300,000. There was another game yesterday. That's like a game changer for your life right there. Yeah, there was another one. I forgot who it was, but theirs was like... Eighty thousand dollars or something crazy like that. Jeepers! Yeah, I did not know that. Wow. Let me see. That is unbelievable. Holy Should cow! I yeah, I, I, I've I've been to fifty fifty raffles before. I mean, and I, you usually hear like tonight's per, you know person will take home three hundred dollars. Yeah. Will take home a thousand dollars. And people are like, oh wow, a thousand dollars. Like thousand dollars will change your life a little bit. Right. You can pay a couple of bills. You can fill up some gas. You can have a nice meal. But like. Three hundred and fifty thousand dollars. Like, <laughs> I would. I my, yeah. I'm thinking of the things that I could do in my life right now with three hundred fifty thousand dollars, just because I happen to buy a couple of tickets at a, at a right. hockey game. Like, and yeah, and I I've heard of people winning like ten thousand dollars, like Brewers games. Yeah, and stuff like, like that. wow, really cool. I mean, obviously, the more people there, the higher probability of not winning, but also the higher probability of winning right. a lot more money. Yeah, but makes I total mean, sense. If they have a twenty thousand person arena, yeah, that's 
still hypothetically how much money could that actually be like, like either someone bought like a couple people bought a thousand dollars worth of i don't know that's just yeah, what are you doing with your life if you can just throw a thousand dollars away that you yeah. on, on raffle tickets be like yeah see what yeah. happens i always find that crazy too we do a lot of like charity auctions and stuff mm-hmm. and the, what people bet on jerseys is just yeah. absurd it's like, oh, this is a game worn jersey from an ahl game here's five grand yeah I, uh, no, 20. 20 grand. Yeah. yeah like, crazy. T shirts, too. We do um, like a celebrity serve, and the guys auction off their t shirts that they wear. And, uh, people buy them for like $1,000. That's ridiculous. $2, Just because it was worn by that one guy yeah. that one time. Mm-hmm. I guess crazy. I see that. Josh says he thinks the Preds are going to take it in six. Oh. Don't jinx them. Jinx them. Be Don't careful, Josh. Be careful with those words that you say about. God, I would. Lo- I would Jamie would literally. Who would they play? Would they play the winner of the Blues Wild? Yeah. That'd be I a fun if they win the Black Eye, because I don't, they're gonna take home. They like they'll win the next game, and then it'll depend who they play after that mm. or the next series. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's my prediction. But if they win the Blackhawks, like I cannot wait to rub it in all my Chicago fans' like, faces because yeah. everyone's like texting me on Saturday, and they're like, "This is just a fluke." Yeah, wait for it. Yeah, we'll, we're coming back. Well, that's what people were saying to us. And okay, so when I went to the game, um, people were pretty crappy for the most part. But I was also holding a baby. Uh, I mean, how how mean can you be to a lady with a baby? Right, so that's what I'm saying. They're like, we're gonna t- we would talk crap to you, but you have a baby in your arms. And I was like, okay, then don't. <laughs> but the second I gave the baby back to its mom, everyone's like, eh, f you, like you guys suck. Like, are you colorblind? Like, what jersey are you wearing? Like, I like, love that the baby like shield, and then as soon as you like yeah. pass it away, they're like, oh, she's free, get her. Yeah, this guy whispered to me at the end of the game. Okay, so we sat by these super cool guys. It's a little creepy. Yeah, obviously we were like, there was probably twenty people in Predators gear there. Like that was it. Wow. I met PK Subban's mom though, so that was cool. Mama Subban. Yeah. We were like, <clears throat> I'm single. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> love your son. my number. <laughs> um, so we're I make really by, good tacos. Yeah, anyway, I do. I do. <laughs> um, we're sitting by a bunch of obviously Blackhawks fans, and ever two guys next to us almost got in a fight with the guys in front of us because they were Wouldn't talking be a hockey too game. much. Yeah, so we're just like sitting there, and then a couple minutes in, like we're scoring, we're like, "Yay, whatever!" Yeah. So then at the end of the game, people are like, "It's only one game, like it's only one game," and I was like, "Okay, a win is still a win. Like we need that one game. Yeah. Like what are you talking about?" And then I'm walking, this guy grabs my arm and he whispers to me, "He's like, it's not over." <laughs> I was like, "Okay." <laughs> Bye. Thank you. It's not over. <laughs> you, help. Do you like lay in your bed at night being like, ah, yeah, ah, I still see his face. Yeah, no, it was, just, it was super Did he bizarre. like look at you creepy? Like, it's not over. Yet. Yeah, we oh. grabbed my arm and he was like in my ear. It's not over. Uh, <laughs> like, I know we still have six games of good play. As long as you didn't like blow in your ear like Lance Stevenson and LeBron in the playoffs. <laughs> like, that'd be like, it's not over. He'd be like, ah, like, get out of here. <laughs> it was the weirdest I probably would have punched him. Oh, and then one more story. So then we're on our way home and we go into the Oasis, right? Yes. So I have my Preds jersey on and Heather has a Preds um, quarter zip on, both yellow. And these guys are like, hey, did it, was there a game today? <laughs> and we're like, yeah, and we won. And they're like, oh. And they're like, who'd you play? And I was like, Chicago. <laughs> and they're like, yeah, well, we're just saving ourselves for playoffs. So I was like, <laughs> all right, bud. Okay. Good for you. You uh, you sure are. Chicago <sighs> fans are the worst. Seriously, no one likes Chicago. Saving ourselves playoffs. That, but that that it was, was the playoffs. Was playoff. I love the like non fans that like pretend be like that only come out like when it really matters. Yeah. Like I wonder how many like fake Chicago Cub fans like came out of the woodwork. Like, we oh, won yeah. the World Series. Be like, name one player. Sammy Sosa. Not even close. <laughs> Not even close. Not even on the team anymore. It doesn't even matter. But good effort. Thanks right. for trying, Bill. But you tried. Oh, my gosh. So let's get to the Monday Mixer because there's some other stuff brewing outside the sports world that I think we need to talk about because uh, people love to talk. I mean, we love to talk about sports. We love to talk about pop culture. We love to talk about everything. So the big thing that's been taking place over the weekend, um, I'm the reason I don't know anything about this is because I'm in a committed relationship. I have a child, and I don't drink excessively or do drugs. I don't know anything about Coachella. Oh. Coachella, you're like, where are you going? Yeah. Coachella is taking place apparently right now. And everybody and their mother is like, oh, my gosh, Coachella. And people are wearing fancy outfits. And, like, I mean, if you want a ex- prime example, number one, like, look what Rihanna's wearing. Like, I mean, who, who in their right mind dresses like this? What normal? What normal human being dresses like that? I mean, that's how she went in like this full like I don't even I can't even think of the word right now. Is it like a like a like a, it was almost like a onesie like yeah. a full onesie that she slipped on and she literally was like sparkly and diamondy and just like but that's for sure that that works for Rihanna because that's her personality and she's an entertainer and like okay 
Like, I, I get that. But, like, there's some terrifying things. Like, people are wearing all kinds of crazy stuff. What 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 is the fascination with this festival? Help me understand sure. it because I don't understand it. And it is really weird. I think the fact that, A, it's in California, and, B, a lot of famous people go to it, the normal non-famous people like myself <laughs> – <laughs> what, I mean, not that I get excited because I don't really care for music festivals. Uh, I get excited because as far as I'm concerned, I don't know if this one is much about like drugs and all that stuff where like Electric Forest or the EDM. Um, what am I thinking of? Oh, um, <sighs> oh, my God. Carnival Disney. Dan- uh, yeah, it's, well, it's Carnival. Well, it, there's a Carnival as well, too. <sighs> but uh, oh, my gosh, because I've had friends that have gone to this in Florida, too. Holy cow. Electric, oh, electric Daisy. Oh, Electric Daisy Carnival. That's it. That's EDC. It there it is. EDC. There, it, there is. it is. We got there. Uh, like, I think that one's way more, like, drug-orientated, where Coachella is just like, oh, my God. Well, Justin yeah. Bieber was in the RV next to my cousin Sally, who's and we cousin may or may not there. have done coke off of his neighbor's girlfriend's dog. Like, yeah. So, like, I think that that's what? more of it. It gets more of And Lady Gaga was there. Yeah. It's more of like you see a lot of like... It just sounds like one big drug trip the entire time you're there. Yeah, I don't understand the... Uh, I know a couple people that go or are there. I've had friends that have gone to EDC went. in Florida, but like... I don't understand the hype. And you look at these pictures of these people, like, oh, what? that is not enjoyable. No. That like, not I don't understand time. like the reasoning behind it. And like, yeah, I mean, some people are like using this platform to like, you know, just find themselves or whatever. But like, it's it's ridiculous. It really is. Like, if I'm a, if I'm a parent... And I'm just like, all right, like, yeah. don't go to this. Like, this is just a terrible idea. You're probably going to end up, you know, drunk, stupid, or both. Like, some th- bad things are going to happen. But, and I know people are posting their selfless pictures of like, oh, I'm just a carefree spirit. Like, look at me. Like, this is so much fun. <laughs> it's like, you have no clue where you are. And you probably are doing all these crazy things. Like, it's a very odd it's it's almost like Woodstock from back in the day. And I, granted, I never went to Woodstock, clearly, because I'm not old enough to go to that. But, like, it strikes me as that it's a big, huge music festival, and there's so much alcohol and so much of this other stuff going on. And you're just like, oh, okay, like, get hyped, get excited. Just couldn't do it. And it's expensive. Like, just listen to some music in your backyard. Seriously. you can. General admission pass is three ninety nine. General admission pass with a shuttle is four seventy four. That sounds a little ridiculous to me personally. VIP pass is at nine hundred dollars. Parking is one fifty. Jabers. Yeah. Robert on Facebook says good morning. He also says I lived in Palm Desert for a couple of years but never went to it. Uh, it's too hippie for him. And that was that's my thing too. I yeah, feel so they're like they're not even real hippies. Like exactly. Fake hippies. Real like, hippies go to Burning Man. Real well, real hippies don't exist anymore. <laughs> real hippies got phased out after the seventies, so yeah. In that regards of people being like, I'm such a hippie. Be like, do you even know what a hippie yeah. is? It's just, I think it's overrated. I agree. Overrated. And I think if it wasn't for social media, it wouldn't be that big of a deal. Well, that's the thing. I had no idea what it was. Because it's not like the national media is oh, reporting live from Coachella here right. at you know ABC. It's like, no. No one does that. Right. It doesn't make any sense to me. I would never go. I don't care about it. Like you said, I would rather sit in my backyard with a nice big speaker and jam out. There was a, I think it was Jimmy Kimmel, maybe Fallon. Probably, I don't know. probably Kimmel. He doesn't care. Um, they went out on the streets of like L.A. or whatever, and he went around. And he was like, "This is like last year, I think, maybe the year before." Yeah, that's definitely Kimmel. And he was like, "So, up and coming artist, dump truck, baby boomers, uh, is performing at Coachella. So what do you think?" And this girl's like, yeah, "Everyone's like, oh my god, I'm so excited!" And like they just made up all these like <laughs> absurd. Uh, band names and people were like yeah we're so excited to see them if people want to know why millennials get a bad rap it's for stupid stuff like this. yeah like come on just admit that you don't know it yeah just well it's that but i'm saying the music festivals as well too people oh. are like like i'm not saying not have fun like go have fun there's summer fest like that makes sense but like or whatever it is a week long just like orgy basically with like music and drugs it's like what are you doing with your life like i get it you're under some stress but like go to the beach go to the beach. like See a therapist. Get a massage. Like, you don't need to go and, like, whore yourself around for a week and just experience, go find yourself. Dexter, it's more than that. It's the music. It's the music. It's the it people. It speaks to my soul. <laughs> Gosh. Take an Advil. You'll be fine. Oh, my Lord. Um, I don't know if you saw this or not. I don't know. First of all, are you a Star Wars fan? You're not a Star Wars fan. That's fine. I just was curious, so I knew nope. how to gauge this conversation Mm-mm. going forward. So for those of you out there that are Star Wars fans. Are you? Uh, I, I am a fan. I'm not a nerd. Okay. There's like, I feel like three tiers of being like, don't care, 
love Star Wars, like, I would marry a Star Wars. And then, like, my ex-boyfriend has a Millennium Falcon from here to here tattoo. What? Yeah. That's, mm-hmm. See, that's the nerd. That's after, the that excessive. That was after we broke Okay. Up. You're like, <laughs> you're like, dodge that bullet. Yeah. But the reason I bring this up is that the trailer for episode nine, six, seven, eight, eight. I know I can read Roman numerals. Episode, no, eight. I don't know. Whatever the hell episode they're on because nine, Disney, I think. I think it's nine. So episode nine, their trailer came out over the weekend. And okay. People have been freaking out. They're so excited about it. Princess Leia makes a little cameo appearance because she shot all of her scenes before she passed away, Carrie Fisher. Uh, so she's going to be a, a lot of uh, integral part of all of this. She's not going to get CGI'd in like she was for Rogue One, and people were freaking out about that. But what is interesting about this, though, is that Carrie Fisher apparently is not going to appear in Star Wars episode... Now, see, that is this is eight. So episode nine is what they're saying here. Uh, she will not appear in uh, because they said that they don't want to CGI her in. They didn't want to try to make it um, fake, basically, or try to get a, Wait, a, a so stunt double. Eight isn't out yet. Eight is coming out in Christmas. Nine, apparently, is what Carrie Fisher will not appear in because she's already shot all of her scenes. Well, I wonder how they're going to kill her off. That's what I'm wondering now is do they, do, you, do they have to rewrite? But they've already shot the entire movie, though, like I think for the most part. Do you have to like – how do you know. go back and kill her off? Or do you like kill her off by like having her die on a ship scene or something? Like right. how do you – I mean it's Princess Leia. How do you kill Princess Leia? She's a boss. I mean it's – yeah, and you, I feel like that will make for a sh- crappy ending if they're just like whatever ship she's on that just blows up. But I don't know what else they would do. I also – don't know anything about Star Wars. That is true. Yeah, Josh corrected me saying it is episode eight. Aaron says hippies do exist. Just drive through River West. Well, I don't ever drive through River West near Milwaukee, so I guess I just don't surround myself with enough hippies. I guess does that make me a bad person? Down with the hippies. Get a job. Cut your hair. Shave. You can be a hippie and have a job. I think. I think so. That's. I mean, that's right. Well, that's what um, anybody that lives in Portland or Seattle. Ah. What are their names? I don't know. They have names. Um, hipsters. I mean, that's really what they are. Hipsters are the millennials of the hippie. Ah. Hipsters are the children of the hippies. Basically, that's what I'm looking for. But gotcha. like, you have the hipster crowd. Like those are those people are everywhere. Those people annoy me. Go away, hipsters. Except for not all of you, because I am friends with a couple of you. But still, like, <laughs> anyway. But like, from, anyway. Going back to Star Wars, though, for for the moment here, though, people are an, are, are outraged a little bit about this because they're like, well, it's Carrie Fisher. Like, she's she's been in almost all the Star Wars movies. I mean, she's Princess Leia. How do you get rid of Princess Leia? I get that, but at the same time, you can't. You don't, don't want to fake. You, you don't want to fake Leia. it exactly because yeah. there was such an uprising about the CGI that like she literally appeared in Rogue One for all of like. 10 seconds and people lost their minds because they had a body double for her for the back for the back shot of her because it's like they thought they were gonna do a quick pan like oh my gosh it's princess leia but then they turned her around and you saw her face and it was like oh you're not a real person like it was that bad well yes and no like if it's a quick glance like oh like okay like princess leia woo like if you didn't know like if that was your first star wars movie ever you'd probably been like she looks a little 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 fake but maybe that's just the the actress no, it was 100% done, like, you know, 100% just CGI'd in, basically. Huh. People said that ruined Rogue One for a lot of people. So hope, I think that's probably the reason here for them is just like, okay, we're not going to do it. We're not going to even remotely try to put her in. So ABC News had that breaking bit uh, over the weekend, so they were able to go and take care of that. Um, so people know. Episode 9 coming out, I believe, in two more years because now that the episode 8 is coming out in Christmas and they have the Han Solo movie coming out the year after that and then episode 9 is going to come out after that. So oh, my goodness. It's this long, drawn-out process from Disney just to make a lot of money. Yeah. Makes sense. It's It'll brilliant. Work. It's the most booming franchise in all of franchises, basically. <laughs> uh, yeah, Aaron said it looked like it was something straight out of a video game. Uh, uh, yeah, Aaron says, apparently, I have to get out more, apparently, because I don't experience the hippie life as much i don't want to experience the hippie life i like living in the suburbs maybe it's just expanding your horizons you sound like a hippie saying that like man like you just gotta experience more life maybe yeah maybe you do judgmental little suburb boy suburb boy homeschooled okay okay (laughs) okay wait a minute now (laughs) you're making this more than it needs to be i feel like calling me a suburb boy judging me like you know me at least i didn't grow up in sheboygan I drove by Sheboygan over the weekend. Went to Did Appleton. You? Yeah, went to Appleton, and I was like, "Sheboygan!" Nice. I gave you a wave. I was like, yeah. "Jay," and then I laughed. 
I'm like, ah, Sheboygan. She's from Sheboygan. <laughs> Good old Sheboygan. Yeah, Robert says, if you work out of your van, apparently you are a hippie. Yeah, that makes sense. I mean, if you do, I mean, are food trucks hipster, though, or hippies? Like, are these guys just the mobile office? You hear um, about the mobile office. Like, I'm taking your, your, your things so we can go and have a mobile day. I don't know if they're hippies. I've met, you know, food truck workers. Some are hippies, some are not. Yeah. It depends. It depends on how you dress. People say dress for success. If you dress like a hippie, you're not going to have a lot of success. It looks like a hippie, and it walks like a hippie, and it smells like a hippie. Yeah. How hard is it to shower? Or put, just put deodorant on? Dexter, not all hippies don't shower. <laughs> Some do. This Most is why, do. This is why Aaron's telling you to get out more. You're being very judgmental right now. Well, they need to stop butting into the stereotype that I feel like. Do they not, though? Oh, boy. So many hippies hit that stereotype, I feel like. And I feel like I'm going to like open the door after the studio, and they're going to be like out there picketing me, being like, down with you, man. Like, you don't know they us. They should. Don't come find me, hippies. Do not. Do not United Airlines me out of the studio. Speaking of United Airlines, uh, they have made uh, some new announcements, apparently, Jamie, which is good news for some. Uh, they have made the announcement that N- United will no longer remove passengers to give seats to crew members. I thought that was part of their thing in the beginning. To, to, they originally should not have let him board if they were going to make him get off. I thought that was already a rule. Right. So under the new change, the crew uh, travel... Crew travel must be booked at least 60 minutes before departure so that while passengers may still be bumped in favor of crew members, it won't happen once they're already boarded the aircraft. I think they usually start boarding, what is it, 30 minutes, I think, before your flight actually takes off is when they open the gates. So hypothetically, if you're in line and it's still an hour before and be like, hey, Jamie, um, I'm going to have to bump you, unfortunately. You're not even on the plane. Here's a voucher. Here's money. Here's whatever we're doing to make you your day a little bit better. Yeah, you might be upset, but you weren't on the plane. Your bag wasn't on the plane. You weren't, you know, seated. You hadn't had your peanuts in your little cocktail. Like, you're good to go to an extent. This is a smart idea. I mean, oh, I agree. And this is, of course, all because of the video that everybody and their mother saw of the guy getting pulled off the plane, physically, like getting dragged off the plane. There's been thousands of memes. Um, yeah, United uh, last week, United voluntarily removed $1 billion of market value as a result of the incident. Like, $1 billion they, had to re- they removed because of this incident because somebody wow. got pulled off of a plane. I, uh, <laughs> my wife and I were joking because we were looking to f- for flights to fly to Florida to visit my mom for Mother's Day, and we were like, well, maybe we should fly United because maybe the prices will be cheaper. They're really not that much cheaper. I can no. fly Delta and American Airlines still for cheaper, uh, and those are established companies that haven't had any issues. Like, why, if you're not United, why would you not just tank your prices for at least like a month or two just to get people back and actually kind of right. caring at least a little bit, you know? I also had to look up United Did States. you? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Jeff wants to know how many hippies or hi- how many hipsters does Jamie know? Jeff would like to know that answer. Mm, I don't know, probably a handful. Probably a handful. Yeah. Can you name a couple of hippies off the top of your head? I don't know if I'd call them hippies or hipsters though. Or hips? I mean, is there a difference? I don't know, but I'm saying like I, I think hipsters. Like are I just have a lot of friends version. that do like the music festivals and they have long hair and beards and all that stuff. Well, does that? But make I don't you think a- I'd consider them hipsters. Maybe they are, and I just blinded by it. Maybe. Like I'm what? So open-minded. I just what? Uh, what classifies you as a hipster? Then, like, do you I have to have like the tight jeans if you're a guy? Do you have to have like the the, the, the slicked hair with like the big sunglasses? Right. That's like, what I'm saying. Like, and the like the chiseled facial, or like either like the crazy beard or like the really fine-tuned like facial hair. Yeah. I feel like there's no in between. Like, I couldn't be a hippie with this facial hair. I need to either like grow it out or I need to like get like nice and pristine and like tweaked and twisted and all that. I see what you're saying. You know, I agree. But I don't know the difference. Like if I'm walking around, like saying, I know the if I'm walking but... around saying I'm a hipster, people are gonna look at me and be like, "You don't dress like a hipster. You don't act like a hipster. How are you a hipster? Like, you have to embrace the world. Okay, gotcha. I feel like, right? Sure. How do you be anything if you I don't, don't embrace it? Yeah. I don't know. You yeah, I got a handful of my hipster friends. Got a handful of hipsies, hip hamsters, hipsters somewhere. Aaron says apparently I'm judgmental. It makes it sound like anyone who doesn't live in the suburbs is a hippie. No, that's not at all what I'm saying. I'm just saying that people in the suburbs actually know how to take care of themselves. <laughs> no, that's not at all true. Uh, Mark says, "Get the Sheboygan girl some coffee in Advil. Looks like the Easter Bunny brought her a hangover. No, no hangover. <laughs> no hangover. Just tired. Just okay. tired. Just... <laughs> you don't have any response to no. Mark just calling you out like that. Mm-hmm. Aaron wants to know if he's a hippie because he lives in the general downtown vicinity. Yes. No. No, he doesn't dress like a hippie. You can live in the city and not be a hippie. 
And you can live in the suburbs and not be a hippie and or be a hippie. It all depends on how you dress and how you act with your life. Does it not? I mean, it, grant, it certainly increases your hipsterness if you live in the city. Right. I would be my, that would be my argument for it. If you live in the city, I mean, it's like, okay, your likelihood yeah, of being hippie. Yeah, but what part of the city? Hipsters don't like downtown because it's loud and noisy. They like River West because there's cheap beer and cheap rent. True. And craft beer. And craft beer. Yeah, I have no idea. I don't know. I'll have to do some research to figure out what exactly marks a hippie. Uh -huh. Robert says, uh, United owns Delta. Well, there we go then. There we go. Now the more you know. Does this, are you going to try to even remotely think about flying on United, though, because of this? Like, how does this change your opinion of flying? It doesn't. It doesn't change your opinion mm -mm. at all? Whatever the best deal is is what you're going to fly. You're not yep. going to be worried about getting your butt pulled off an airplane. Mm -mm. And I talked to my wife about this yesterday, too, and she said, if people just followed authority... We right. wouldn't have this issue. Like, if people actually just listened to authority, she's like, we see this. Because she was a teacher for a while. She's like, if people, you know, how many kids nowadays don't listen to their teachers? How many people don't listen to their coaches? How many people don't listen to their bosses? Everybody has to stand up and have an opinion. You're right. Like, if people just followed authority respectfully, like, you can voice your displeasure be like, well, I don't agree with you. But I will do it because you're my boss or because you're my coach or you're my teacher. Like, nowadays, it's like, no. To hell with you. I don't care what your what your position is. Here's me. Hear me roar. It's like, right. who are you? I'm, I'm your superior, not your subordinate. Yeah. No, people just listen and obey. I get, yeah. Half of these stories that are stories wouldn't be stories. Exactly. And social media also helps blow everything out oh, of the yeah, water. Like, sure, that's really the big sure. thing. I mean, if you don't get a, a tweet or an Instagram or a Facebook Live video out about what you're doing... Almost it like doesn't count anymore. Right. It's like guys, like I just saw George Bush like making out with Lady Gaga. Would you get a picture of it? No. Wow, well, I'm sure it didn't happen. Right. But if you got a picture of that, like whoa, like people are freaking out. That goes viral, and then people lose their minds. Uh, Tom and Sarah tuning in as well too. Good to see you this morning, guys. Aaron Brew, uh, Robert says hippie equals pro world extremist who uh, enjoys many trips to Colorado for gummy bear laced with THC. Quite possibly. Mm -hmm. I mean, there are certain states where you think of you think of Portland, you think of Washington. I mean, Oregon, obviously, I guess, not Portland. But, like, you think of Portland, you think of Seattle, you think of Colorado as a whole. You're thinking a lot of hippie, hipsters, all of that stuff. You don't think of Wisconsin as a, as a, as a, as a hipster state, do no, you? No, I don't think so. I think Milwaukee is trending towards hipster. It used to be that more, like, ghetto to an extent, but right. it's really been built up because of the hipsters and others moving into the city. So that helps. Not just my thoughts. Anything else we need to talk about today, Jamie? We've been all over the place today, and I think that's a good thing. Yeah, no, uh, maybe, hmm, let's see. I don't know. I'm just trying to think if there's anything else today. I mean, we've had some great, uh, great comments, great thoughts today as well, too. A quick reminder for all of you as well that um, Bruce Sports is now officially broadcasting on three different platforms uh, on a daily basis, depending on where you are with your life. You can watch us live here on Facebook. You can watch us live on YouTube. You can listen to us live on Spreaker.com, and you can also get it podcasted on iTunes as well, too. So you two places to watch, one place to listen all Three the time. places to watch. No, two, two places. Pla okay, two places it. to watch, it, one place to listen. Ooh. We're here, we're there, we're everywhere, as the people would like to say. And it makes for a good time. So... Well, Jamie, if we don't have anything else, I think the uh, the hippies that we did have no longer will watch us because, you know, I mean, people are putting together their... dog on everybody all the time. <sighs> Am I dogging? Is it, is, it, is it a bad thing to have an opinion? No. I mean, it's okay. But to... you just talked about how you think hippies are dumb did the I last say that five minutes dumb? and then said how they have uh, Reshaped helped... Milwaukee. Yeah. Did I say hippies were dumb? Pretty much. Did I, though? Pretty much. So, I like you hippies. Sorry that Baxter doesn't. Hashtag team hippie for Jamie. Yeah. <laughs> Hashtag no team hippie for Baxter. Hashtag no drama. <laughs> no hippie. I have no idea. Don't don't hate me because I, I may or may not like hippies. That has nothing to do with me as a person. I'm just saying that there are certain people and certain trends that uh, that just annoy me. You know? Mm -hmm. That's just all I have to say. And I'm sure that goes for you as well, too. I'm sure you could think of different fads and trends that you're just like, meh, I don't like it. Nope, I like it all. I don't believe you. I think you're lying to me. You're just full of lies and slandery this morning. Never. Mm hmm Well, with that being said, then, Jamie Evers, uh, this has been a lot of fun. It's uh, great to have you back, of course. Uh, we'll be back here again tomorrow. 
uh, at 8 a.m. Eastern Time, 7 a.m. Central Time, live right here on Facebook, YouTube, and on Spreaker.com. Make sure you go over to like our page, subscribe. I mean, the cool thing about broadcasting on YouTube as well, for those of you that don't, maybe don't want to watch on Facebook, is that anytime we go live and you subscribe, you get an email saying, hey, Bruce Sports is live. Come watch. That way you can keep up to date with everything else we got going on. Spreaker does that as well, too. So I know you said you have a lot of your friends that actually listen to our show on their way to work or when they get to work because mm -hmm. they don't want to Facebook and drive. or We, don't, we do not promote Bruce Sports and driving. We, we, we don't want any accidents here. Uh, so it's really great to hear how people tune in to watch what we've got going on on a daily basis. So a very special thanks to all of you that continue to do that. Uh, keep inviting people to like the Facebook page as well, too. We've had amazing growth over the last couple of days, so keep doing that as well. Don't forget to check out our website, brewsportsnet.com. Coming up next is Halftime here on Brew Sports with myself and Tanner Burke. That's at noon Eastern, 11 Central Time right here on Facebook, on YouTube, and on Spreaker.com. You can find us on our social media platforms on Facebook, on Twitter, and Instagram at Brew Sports Net. On all three of those, she's at Jamie Ebers when she tweets. It's not very often, but when she does, she usually brings the fire. You've been tweeting a little bit more recently, haven't recently you? I recently, recently, have. because the predators are yeah. getting You're like, ah, I've been a fan all season long. I'm like, all right. No, I, she is. She's a she's a through and through fan. Yeah. I can vouch for that. She's not a hippie. She doesn't just you know jump when it's trendy. She's a lifelonger. And yep. We appreciate that. So you can follow her at Jamie underscore Evers. I'm at Baxter Colburn at Bruce Sports Net, as we mentioned, on all social media platforms. Thank you so much for watching. Enjoy your Monday. I uh, hope your Easter was well. hope your rest of your day goes well for you guys as well, too. Robert, Aaron, Mark, Jeff, Sarah, Josh, Liz, everybody that tuned in this morning, and many, many others as well that were here. We appreciate you swinging by. Uh, you have a great rest of your day, and we'll see you guys next time on The Morning Brew. Have a great rest of your Monday, and we'll see you next time.